it's so great to finally get back to having a guest again when i'm doing these daily episodes it's kind of like i'm just in a cave by myself speaking my thoughts kind of just hoping that somebody hears it so today i was joined by laurel clouston also known by her her artist or musician name laurel and it's cool because like you can just say either one and either way you're right so for someone like myself who can sometimes stumble on names it was a win-win situation i have a mission for you the listener the thing is that uh, i am someone who aspires for big goals and big dreams and i tend to gravitate towards others who aspire for big goals and big dreams and as I compound these people who are all going in different directions in positive trajectories and doing big things for themselves, I tend to create this cool little network of people that can help each other out. My mission for you is I want you to check out Laurel on Spotify or truly anywhere that you can find her. Something that you can do to help her out, which would help me out, is... You should find her music, find something that resonates with you, and share it. Share it on social media, listen to it, request it with your local radio station. One of my little, like, side missions, something that I'm inspired to do is I've had a lot of alumni guests on the Lifestyle Chase who perhaps could be the movers and the shakers that uh, gets her some, some plays on the radio because being a artist a musician a independent business owner anything under that umbrella is tough and people need to work together to make big things happen and maybe maybe i won't be able to create that big of an impact but if i have any kind of a chance i'm gonna shoot that shot so find her music give it a listen save it on your spotify um subscribe to her as an artist Ask your local radio station to play her music. Those are all ways that you can help her out. I think you'll be very inspired by her story. There's a lot of perspective to draw from, and I hope you enjoy. Make sure to send me a message if you have anything that you got from this. Thanks for listening. Welcome to The Lifestyle Chase, Season 2. This podcast features high performers who have found a way to live their best life while balancing their health, wellness, friends, and family. I'm your host, Chris Little. Let's get started. The Lifestyle Chase is brought to you by Yeg Fitness. Yeg Fitness is Edmonton, Alberta, Canada's healthy lifestyle community, creating and supporting active living for all. Check them out online at yegfitness.ca and on social media at Yeg Fitness. So welcome to the Lifestyle Chase episode 93. I am joined by Laurel Clouston. Hello, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> you it's, bet. It's my first podcast. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah, I'm so, happy to be here. So do you listen to podcasts at all? I do a little bit. I've just started recently. Nice. Yeah. What, what's your favorite uh, style? I listen to um, Impact Theory. I started watching that on YouTube in their videos, um, and I realized that they have a podcast version of that. Yeah. And so I started listening to that in the morning um, when I'm working out and stuff. So. What's the most helpful thing that that podcast has done for you so far? Mm, good question. Um, it's really, really cool because they pull in people from um, different aspects of life and uh, uh, people who are really, really um, advanced in that field. Um, I think for me personally, um, all of the nutrition advice is like super, super interesting. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because it doesn't matter how much science there is supporting one idea, there'll always be enough science to support something completely opposite. Yeah. And, uh, it was just really interesting that through all of that, I kind of decided that I just need to do what's the best, like for my own body. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I really, really got super interested in nutrition through impact theory. Nice. Yeah. What's your root or your workout routine like? My workout routine. Yeah. Um, it's a little all over the place. <laughs> okay. I hate to admit that, but it is. Um, I'll go through spurts where I'm I'm doing a lot more weightlifting and I'm heavy into it, and then I'll get really really busy, and then and then in my busiest times, I try to um, do at least fasted workouts in the morning. I feel like if I wake up and before I do anything else, I'm so lucky. I have a gym in my apartment. 
So I wake up basically in my pajamas, go downstairs, uh, jump on the elliptical or the bike and just wake my body up through cardio. Um, and I feel so much better when I do that. Um, especially with like a weird sleep schedule. It's changing all the time. It's like the one thing that like wakes me up and gets rid of the, the grogginess and the, the brain fog and everything that makes me just want to sit on the couch and not do anything all day. So yeah, yeah. that's been like my go-to as of late. I try to do that uh, two or three times a week. And then um, if, I, if I have more time and if I have a lot of the energy, then I'll do like day or night sessions and, and do more weight training. And Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So if you were to just describe yourself mm-hmm. in like three-ish sentences, how would you describe yourself? Like who you are, what you do, what you're about, what's important to you, things like that. Yeah, um, good question. Uh, I think that's always changing. Um, the person I saw myself as growing up is very different than the person that I see myself as now. Um, growing up, I would have said that I'm, I'm an athlete. And the two things that I think have stayed the same is that um, I've always been creative and I've always been very compassionate and just I care about people. Um, so I guess the one part that has changed is just the athletic side of it isn't in the forefront anymore. It's it's something that I do to keep my body and mind healthy, but it's not necessarily, I guess, who I am anymore, you know? I wouldn't yeah. define myself as the athlete. Um, yeah, but uh, I've moved on to more of the creative side of me that's always been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What what kind of sport did you start up playing? I was a gymnast. Nice. I was a gymnast. Um, I competed uh, nationally and internationally a little bit. Um, and I was very, very heavy into that until I was around 15 years old. Um, I competed at the elite level and, and that was my whole entire existence. If you were to give some the advice on being a gymnast, what would mm-hmm. that advice be based on like all the, the struggles you may have gone through or any of like the, the times when you just didn't know what to do and you needed advice yourself? Um, trust your body always. Um, if you're hurting, don't push past it just because you want something really badly because you can end up injuring yourself long term. And um, also make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. I feel like for gymnasts especially, um, you start so young and, and the, the age as like the, the age range for, for gymnastics is, is totally different than any other sport, right? Like if you haven't started by five, like there's not a huge chance that you're going to be as successful. You know what I mean? Statistics show, but, um, yeah, I was saying just, um, make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, as a gymnast, a lot of gymnasts are really, really young. And it's super easy to um, forget about why you even started in the first place. Um, It's so easy to just, I don't know, that's all that you've known, right? It's your whole entire life. So it's important to check in with yourself and say like, do I still love this? Is this something that I want to do? Or am I only doing it because it's, it's become a habit and everyone around me is a gymnast and we, we've all been doing this forever and it's just what we do instead of, you know, just making a decision for yourself. Makes sense. Yeah. What was your first gymnastics class like? Ever. Um, I think I was living at, I was in Texas when I started gymnastics, actually. I was born in the States. Um, I don't remember my first class. I remember my mom telling me that at a very young age, I was doing cartwheels all around the house. I think a lot of kids are very energetic and rolling around the ground, but even more so I wouldn't stop. And then she told me that after my first class, I was, I, I wasn't going to stop. I wanted to keep going and yeah. I just wanted to, I liked being the center of attention apparently. And, uh, it was always like, look at me, mom, watch me do this. Watch this new thing that I learned. <laughs> um, and it's funny initially, the reason why they put me in gymnastics was because I wasn't a coordinated kid. Like I, when I would run, my legs would go out to the side, like my arms would flail. Like I, I just, I, did, I don't know. I, I, she wanted me to learn coordination and then, and then put me in gymnastics and I just, I, I, I loved it. I kept going. Yeah. Is there anything from gymnastics that you've applied to your work as a musician? Work ethic. Um, there's so many times in music where I second guess myself and I, I think that like 
I maybe maybe I can't do this. You know what I mean? Maybe I was an athlete and that was kind of my thing. And maybe music isn't isn't for me because it seems hard. And then I look at what I did with gymnastics at such a young age, and every single time I'm like, if I could do that then, I can do anything now. If I could perform in front of a thousand people on a balance beam and 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 under all this pressure at 14 years old, you know what I mean? I can get up on the stage and sing songs. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. have to like dumb it down for myself in order to, to be like, this is nothing. And I think that's really, really helped with that. If I hadn't had gymnastics before, I don't know if I would have the confidence to, to push through a lot of the things that I have that seemed impossible. Yeah. Yeah. It's really helped. And you talked about like sort of the environment that you end up being like you're, you're in gymnastics and all you know is gymnastics mm-hmm. and everybody around you is gymnastics. Yeah. Um, and you're born in the States. Yep. So what was it like moving to Canada? Mm-hmm. Like what would happen during that time? How did you feel? What was it like having your environment totally change? Uh, yeah, I grew up with my environment changing very often. Um, my dad was a hockey coach. And he played when I was really young and then would coach roller hockey, sorry, roller uh, hockey in California. Um, and then we would move back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he would coach ice hockey during the uh, winter season. And it just, I moved all the time. And so that was another thing that was kind of all that I knew. Um, and so I went from gymnastics club to gymnastics club. And um, as hard as that might have been, it was the one constant in my life. Um, it was the one thing where everywhere I went, I had an instant friend group because we all stuck together and everywhere I went, I was so lucky that, um, it's different from some other sports. I know dance, for example, like it's, you see it portrayed on TV and and everyone's, it's competitive and, and it can be catty. And for some reason with gymnastics, it, it was just the most supportive group of girls that I had ever met everywhere that I went. And so it was very nice. I had an instant friend group. Um, My last big move as a kid, though, I moved from Tri-Cities to Medicine Hat, Alberta, and that was a big change. Um, Gymnastics is way bigger in the States. Um, There's way more girls involved, there's way more gymnastics clubs, even in like a smaller city there'll be multiple gym clubs. Moving to Medicine Hat, uh, there was one gym club, and um, it, it... I don't, I don't want to talk down on it because it was like incredible. It really was. But um, like the level of gymnastics in comparison to like where I had been, it just like wasn't, it didn't exist. And it didn't exist for like the, the place that I really wanted to get. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I had my eyes on, on the Olympics and university and Team Canada and, and there was no one at my level yet when I, when I got there. And so it was a big change. That would be like like football. Like football in the States is so much bigger yeah. than football in Canada. Yeah. So you're going to hit this culture shock of like, yeah, they, they have a program. Yeah. It's not going to be with the volume of people. Mm-hmm. The development isn't going to be at the same stage because they have to cater to who they are serving. Sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So is that kind of what started your transition out of gymnastics? or? Actually, no. Um, I moved, I think I was 11. Um, and... My mom has a lot to do with my success as a gymnast, actually. Um, she decided that she was going to be a gymnastics coach out of, out of nowhere because she wanted to help. She got like very involved in what I was doing um, throughout just because I felt like I um, didn't have anyone to help me out. And we were always very close. And so I would talk to her about things that were happening in the gym all the time. I would talk about the skills that I was doing. And, through all of that, she kind of slowly learned um, the world of gymnastics and then decided to like really actually get into it um, and took a bunch of courses and then decided to become a gymnastics coach. And, um, and through that, we kind of, through um, myself, my mom, and my gymnastics, gymnastics coach, Eva, who was there at the time, um, we really kind of just learned and built together and from, from like this level all the way up. And so I had someone supporting me the whole entire way, but we were all learning as we went. And it was a very, very unique situation um, up until a point when um, I, I knew that I needed help and we brought another coach in from, he was actually a Hungarian gymnastics coach a while ago and then I think he was in coaching in Banff and he had come in for um, a camp and he, he was very, very knowledgeable. Uh, he pushed me very hard, maybe a little bit too hard. 
but um, I got to the place that I really wanted to be um, in the sport. Um, but at, at 15, that was when I started really questioning if it was something that I liked or if it was something that I had been doing for so long and it was all I knew. And uh, the, the new coach that we had brought in had caused like a lot of uh, uneasiness with myself. And, and, and then I got injured and that was kind of my out in a way. Like I was, I had dislocated my shoulders a bunch of times and um, had some mental blocks and it just was like a combination of things and and when I was injured and I was in a physiotherapist and he was like you know we're gonna have to like it's looking like we're gonna have to do a couple surgeries he was like we don't know if it's gonna make it better worse or if it's gonna stay the same and after that I was like I don't I don't want to have surgeries I don't want to be in pain anymore and I actually like I don't know if this is who I want to be anymore you know mm -hmm. I was in high school I kind of wanted to have more of a normal life um I was homeschooled for a little bit in grade eight. I hated that. I'm a social person. So to take that away was really, really hard for me. Um, yeah, and that was kind of just, that was the out that I needed, I think. I don't know if, if I had, if I hadn't been injured, you know, I think I would have kept going and I don't think it would have been a good thing for me. So I think it was a bit of a blessing in disguise. Yeah, yeah, I think that happens to a lot of people in their life, and it's yeah. just kind of cool to, to see how that happens and everything. Mm -hmm. You talked about, like, the supportive sort of friend groups in gymnastics. Mm -hmm. Do you still keep in contact with, with any of them? I don't. And, and it's, like, we do, I shouldn't say that. It's not like we're super close friends anymore. Um, but if I reached out to any of them, we would have an amazing conversation. And we've, I've had a few of them reach out to me over the last few years. Um, but it's not like we're best friends, but it's kind of one of those things you like always have a friend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What are the, like the characteristics about them that kind of stand out as being like those people that you can stand to be apart from and then reconnect like nothing ever happened? I think it's because we all th went through a similar experience. I think that the experiences that we had in life, you can't compare to anything else. And it's hard to explain to, um, someone else fully what gymnastics is and what it looks like on the inside unless you've been through it you know like i can i can explain it but to just truly live it is different and i think it's just the shared experience um and the mutual respect for each other and and the things that we went through um that kind of creates just that friendship and the relationship that's on a different level that's awesome. Like yeah. that, that is just something that comes up often just in like the different fitness communities. Like yeah. you know, all the CrossFit people stick together because they all went through that tough wad. Yeah. And all the spin people, they stick together because they just got like their life flash before their eyes in the class. Yeah, and yeah, and it's like, yeah. Yeah, I totally understand that. Mutual experience, yeah. Um, with, with, cause your parents sound pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> just, you. just straight up, tell me more about them. Like what, what makes them who they are? What are they all about? Uh, my dad's a hockey coach. He coaches, um, Cam Loops now, but he coached Medicine Hat Tigers, um, for a long, long, long time in the WHL. Um, and he played hockey for a long time when he was growing up as well. Um, and yeah, he's, he's just always, always been an athlete and always, um, very, very passionate about hockey. Um, my mother can do everything. She just, we we moved so much that every single time she was raising us, she would just adapt and find something else in this new place that she could do to financially support us. She was a painter one time, uh, like she painted houses and, and, and she's actually an incredible artist. Um, and she uh, started a pet sitting business. Um, she became a graphic designer at one point. Um, she, gymnastics coach, uh, dental assistant. And then now recently she um, is writing a novel. She's writing books. And it's really, really cool um, to have someone in my life who, who just decides to, to do something and just does it, you know? Because she, either because she feels that she needs to or she wants to or it's just an interest of hers. And, and it's cool because I think a lot of times we can get stuck in um, a routine of, oh, I, I went to school and I have a teaching degree, I'm a teacher. You know, and then that's just kind of who I am. And to, to grow up with someone who was constantly like, I, I can do this, sure. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll read this book and figure out how to do this. And, 
And um, I think that's what, what gave me some of that flexibility to make those decisions growing up. Yeah, she's inspired me a lot. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I like that you talked about like the whole like your activity your, or your career or your passion becomes your identity and mm-hmm. like, disconnecting from that. Yeah. Because it seems to be like a reoccurring theme with people that I talk to. Like maybe they're passionate about a certain fitness thing and then that takes over their identity without the fitness thing. Who are they? It's hard. Yeah. I think it's really, really hard. And I always, um, I remember my dad telling me that when I was very, very young because I was terrified of the idea that if I didn't do gymnastics, who who was I? And I remember having, him having this conversation with me and, and him saying that he, he completely understands that feeling because he went through a period and he was like, if I wasn't a hockey coach, who am I? As like, who, as Sean, who am I? You know what yeah. I mean? And and I remember that as a, being super young and, and, and just kind of deciding that like, I'm Laurel, but I'm going to do different things. You know what I mean? And I'm going to, gonna try different things and all those those combination of things kind of can can mold me but they're not necessarily who I am and I still I still struggle with that a little bit yeah I think we all do yeah it's just a matter of admitting it yeah <laughs> so um you were homeschooled for a bit did yeah. you go back to public school after that I did I did and homeschooled like I say that very lightly like I, I think it was half a year and then after that it was um like half of my classes but even still, like it was, it was grade eight. It was enough for me to not be a part of everything that was going on. And if you already feel like a bit of an outcast, it's all of a sudden just like, you, you can't, you, <laughs> you know what I mean for everything. Plus gymnastics, it's um. There's no season. There's no off season. It's twenty four seven. You know, um, taking two week holiday, holiday vacations wasn't an option because you, your body changes. You grow. You you lose that um that muscle memory like so quickly and yeah. so um i remember training in the summer 30 to 36 hours a week and during the school year 20 to 24 hours a week on top of going to school so if i wasn't in school like there was no after school activities that i could be a part of and even like hanging out with my friends and going to birthdays like that wasn't something i could do because i was always in the gym so taking like not being in school as well i i was just like i, I can't do this this is the one thing I can't compromise on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important for people to, like, pick that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, you see so much in social media with, like, the mental health and stuff. And then we lose sight of, like, the things that are in our control, like, creating that community. Yeah. So, for yourself, like, I know that you, you have that, like, crazy work-life balance. Yeah. Um, how do you foster that community in your life today? It's definitely something that I'm still... Um, trying to work on I'll go through periods of time where I will be super super involved in work and then and that's all I will do and then I'll go through periods where I I'm a homebody and I I like all of a sudden need a moment and I <laughs> kind of shut the world out and then I'll go through periods where all I want to do is be social and talk to people and it's been hard for me to um balance like a little bit of that throughout my week um it's been interesting I uh because I work another job on the side as well. Like I'm a, I'm a musician right now and a songwriter and I'm doing my artist project, but um, to make money to, to do that and to live, I'm, I've been bartending. And um, that's in a way created this social environment um, that I need, you know? Um, maybe not necessarily the best one at, at all times, but it is it is a social environment and I found my little group of friends within within the industry and people that that I really, really, truly care about and support me, and and that's been that's been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I like to promote that idea of just like if a person doesn't have like that that group that they just really care about. Yeah, they it's need hard to, to it's, find a way to find them. It's so hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one thing that I decided I was going to do for myself this year um, is is find um, people outside of of work and outside of the music industry that um, I that kind of just become my new community um, because there it's just when it's so related to something I do it's like it's incredible and it's amazing but I, I always still kind of feel like I'm missing something yeah um, and I love meeting new people and I love getting different perspectives on the world and I'm a very social person and I think just because of how busy that I've made myself in the last little bit I've I've like stepped away from from that community um, of people and and it's something that I I would like to find um, 
as well, like always moving growing up, I think in my head I always thought that I was just going to move again. Even when I came to Edmonton for school, I had it in my head like I was going to be here for school and then who knows where I'd be. Like maybe I'll be in LA, maybe I'll be in Toronto, maybe, you know. And it was just kind of this year I had a realization that like, I don't know when I'm going to move again. Like this could be a place that I, I stay for a little bit or at least be a home base. Um, like I'll, I'll travel, but this is the place that I come back to and, and I think it's super important to have that have that community and it's something that I, I kind of just threw away for a bit so yeah so if we took a time machine back to like grade 11 grade 12 for mm -hmm. you uh, where did you envision yourself being at this time in your life like where did oh, you picture oh. yourself being um if we go all the way back to grade 10 still in gymnastics I would have said UCLA California being a, a university gymnast that was everything that I thought that I wanted. The idea of being on a team of girls, um, it's a way uh, more fun atmosphere, having a, being in a warm place, um, uh, going to school and it being paid for, like that was everything that I thought that I wanted. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it was hard for me as soon as that wasn't a reality anymore. It took me a while to figure out who I was um, because I was like, I'm not a gymnast anymore. I guess I'm just a regular person. I'm going to go to university like my friends are doing and just kind of live that life. And it took me a while to, to figure out what I wanted to do. I came to uh, U of A and um, I have an elementary head degree. And I think it was in my, in my second year, I, I, was, I was just... In my head, I was like, I'm going to school. I'm learning things. You know, this is cool. I don't know what else I would be doing if I wasn't doing this, so I'm going to do this. And then in my third year, I was like, what am I doing? I don't want to be a teacher. Like, I I just picked something because um, my stepdad is a is a, as a principal, and, and that whole side of the family is teachers, and I loved kids, and I still love kids. And I love helping people and I love seeing people grow. And so in my head, I was like, I should be a teacher. That just makes sense. I was a gymnastics coach. I loved it. My third year, it was like, I, there's so many parts of teaching that I do enjoy, but there's so many parts that contradict who I am and what I want to be. And I was like, I don't know if this makes sense. And, and, my, and my mother, she, uh, she didn't finish school. And, and so it was, a, it was very, very important for her that I finished, and at the time, I think I fought her a little bit on it. Um, but I realize now why it was important. Um, I think one philosophy that I've always believed in is if you start something, finish it. You know, um, it's just creating that habit. It's so easy to um, to not finish things, and then that 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 starts to filter out into every day of your life. You. You pick up a hobby, you drop it. You pick up a book, you read five sentences. You're like, nah, I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? And I think it's just important that if you start something, you finish it. And and um, I'm so happy that I finished school. I have a piece of paper. <laughs> cool. But I think it was more just the idea that I pushed through something that was hard for me. And instead of, instead of um, just looking at the negatives in the situation, I tried to take the positives out the whole entire time. Like, I loved the university experience. I do. I, I loved the people that I met. I loved um, my joint dance team for a little bit. I loved that part of it. I loved being a student, you know? So there's a lot of positives that come from experiences that might not be what you want them to be. Yeah. So what sparked the music career for you? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of crazy. I always, always loved music. Um, as a kid, I was always dancing around the house. Um, the singing part's funny. I kept that to myself. I thought that people who sang like they were like I looked up to them so much like I just didn't I didn't think that anyone could do it because I didn't grow up with that you know I looked uh I listened to people on the radio and like anytime I ever saw a live performance it was the craziest thing to me I remember very vividly um in in Tulsa Oklahoma there was this girl that was in grade two that sang I believe I can fly on stage at like a, a assembly and I was like, I, I want to be that. Like, she is, she is a god. Like, that is amazing. That is the craziest thing in the world. She sounds so beautiful. I want to be able to sing. And I kept that to myself always. Like, I just, it was this, like, love, but it was, like, silent. And um, my mom had no idea I could sing. 
I remember my dad in the car, like I'd sing so quietly under like my breath and the radio would be playing and he'd like turn it down to try to like hear me constantly. And uh, it, it kind of just, yeah, after gymnastics um, ended, it was still a while. I loved writing. I was writing poetry all the time. Um, and it's funny, like I, I wasn't necessarily reading poetry books. I was just writing my teenager -y feelings down <laughs> in, in a poetic form, I think. And, and uh, I just thought it was so interesting the way that words, words fit together and how you can like craft them so carefully to mean something that hits someone so much harder. You know what I mean? Than you would if you just you just say it. Um, and I've always been intrigued by that. And uh, I think I was 17 when I got my first guitar and I decided that I wanted to try and turn songs, like the things that I was writing, into songs. And a friend of mine had taught me, I think, like four chords of a Taylor Swift song. And then she taught me afterwards that you can pretty much take those four chords and put a cable in your guitar and play any song you want at the most basic level yeah and my mind was blown i i was i was playing guitar all the time i was writing songs they weren't great and um i somehow decided that it was a good idea to start posting them online on youtube but it was still like at the beginning of, of youtube and everything um and yeah, I started posting all these videos, these covers, these original songs, but like I wouldn't attach my name to them because I didn't want anyone to know that I was doing this, but I just wanted to know if people thought that I was good or if I had any chance, you know? Yeah, it was yeah. like, I was like dipping my toes in to be like, hi, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> um, yeah, that was kind of how that started. And a, a friend of mine, we were singing in the car and there's this uh, guy in the back seat with us who was the quarterback of the football team. He was, you know, the musicals. He was like the Troy Bolton the high school musical, but like real life. And uh, he was like, you have a good voice, Laurel. I like, melted. And, uh, and then he asked me to sing a duet with him. Um, James Thorgood, if you ever listen to this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, he asked me to sing a duet with him on stage in a theater, and um, my crazy head said yes, and then that was kind of the beginning of everything. It's so funny, I found that video recently. It's on Facebook, but it's like hidden on Facebook, and I watched it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm embarrassing. I'm like on stage, like stick arm, standing there in this dress, like a robot, like <laughs> so uncomfortable in my own skin. But that was what started it. That's yeah, awesome. That was what, what started all of it. And, and in that third year of university, when I decided that like, I wasn't going to teach, I had to do something, you know? And I was I was playing with, with friends in university and started to get on stage like a tiny little bit. And I was writing a ton, a ton, a ton. And um, as soon as I finished school, I was listening to music all the time. I was listening to lyrics. I was deciphering. I was, I was obsessed with melodies. I was... I was just figuring out how to get better at songwriting and I decided, I was like, okay, maybe this is crazy, but I'm going to give myself a year to just do something with music, you know, put like a full foot in the water, <laughs> just do something. And, and if the universe like gives me anything back at all, then I'm going to pursue it, you know? Um, and as soon as I started, it, things kind of just started to snowball. I mean, they snowballed up to a point and they hit a giant brick wall. And then that was when I was like, okay, what do I actually want? And, and I, I really had to think about it and decided that I, music honestly just makes me so incredibly happy. And, um, and I just, the people that I've met um, throughout being a songwriter and, and the people that I've affected that I just didn't, I, I didn't think that anyone was going to react to the songs that I was writing, you know? And I always hoped that they would. And I always hoped that I would... Um, I would touch people and influence people and but um, the response that I got back from it was more than I ever could have imagined and I I just want to keep writing and keep creating yeah what was the response that you got from music that you created that like hit you the most um I think there's a couple different situations <laughs> one when a girl reposted my lyrics on her Instagram story, I was like, I have made it. I don't care what else happens. Like someone, like I, I was that kid in, in high school or um, probably university, who knows, who like would like 
find song lyrics and like post them on my pictures like so embarrassing but like because I just felt I don't know when you don't have like actual words to express how you feel and you find a song that just does that and it's just like the best feeling in the world and you're like someone else feels the way I do you know yeah. and there's someone else you probably look up to as well so when someone else reposted my lyrics on their their Instagram story and they were like like I, I think they said like I, I felt this so so strongly today I was like oh my gosh yeah like what I I I was that person for somebody you know I was that person that they were listening to my song and they're like oh man like I'm going through this this hurts this sucks and like I feel this so deeply right now and they went a step above that and they're like hey everyone this I feel you know yeah. it was just it yeah that that meant a lot um um and I had another girl reach out to me one time too um just saying that that I I had inspired her um to do something that she really really wanted to do and and that uh she had I think she had known that I was a gymnast as well and then a um, decided to do music and that just really really meant a lot you know I feel like we're all kind of stumbling through life at least it feels like I am and I don't necessarily know if I'm doing it right or if I'm making the right decisions or or if I'm or if I'm doing enough for for everyone else in the world and and to have someone reach out and say like hey you're doing a good job like you've impacted me um, it's just kind of gives you that reassurance you know Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. Like with the whole like using artist lyrics, I did that just the other day with an NF song. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, that oh, speaks to me. He has some incredible <laughs> lyrics. Oh my goodness. It's crazy how he strings it together. And then I know. just talking about like getting that feedback to to be wondering if what you do makes an impact. Like as a podcast host, I feel like I kinda just talk out to the abyss <laughs> sometimes we're bringing on guests and we're just talking out to the yeah. abyss and we don't know yeah if anybody's listening yeah it's very tough. true I, f- I f- feel like that so much <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so when it comes to musicians who do you look up to or who is a musician that you figure has already made it and you've resonated with their work okay anyone who knows me <laughs> already knows this answer and and i it's been the same answer for so long um, but Halsey, she's releasing an album today, you know, be out at 12 o'clock and I'm very excited about it. Um, I've been influenced by, I, by like a lot, a lot, a lot of different artists. Um, growing up and not being in like a very musical family, I think a lot of my influences came from like a lot of just mainstream radio, like the radio being on, you know? Um, and, and then it was later on that I kind of dove into like the folk world and then the singer songwriter world and then um, more into the the pop world but um, an artist there's two artists who I grew up with it female artists that heavily influenced me Taylor Swift was I just actually one of them just because she was a girl with her guitar writing love songs and breakup songs and they related to my life at the time and I grew up with her and I like we were, we were similar ages and we were going through similar situations and and I got to see her become this like this superstar, you know what I mean? And and have such a heavy influence on on the world and pop culture and and um and just be a good person and and go through uh trials and tribulations and and have a hard time and get, and get through them and just just be a person, you know? Um so she was she was a big one for me. And then and then Halsey has always been a huge one for me as well. Um, she's she's more on the mainstream side of music right now, but um, when she first started, it was a lot more like alternative. Like her lyrics were were very very introspective and dark and poetic and cool and and she's just kind of always been this this badass who says what she wants and seems to know exactly who she is. And, and that was something I wanted so badly and looked up to her for. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's, it's good that when you're picking your role models that you're finding like those other characteristics in mm-hmm. them, like how they lead their life, not just what they create, but yeah. like how they create it and with what intent. Yeah. With uh, your career in the last like two years, yeah. what, what's your three biggest wins? Hmm. Uh... I just went to Seoul as a songwriter and I wrote K-pop over there. That's probably one of the bigger ones. I uh, I decided that I if I wanted to be I wanted to be a songwriter and I do want to be a songwriter. 
And I think one of the coolest parts about being that is you get to travel and write music. And, and thinking about my younger self, looking at what I'm doing now, I know that I would have thought that was the coolest thing in the world. It's interesting because I've gotten kind of like caught up in it and instead of just appreciating it for what it is sometimes, I'm like, but what's next? You know, like I did this cool, like we did this step, like what else can I do? But when I just sit and think about like my life and what that looks like right now, like I just got to go travel to a country that maybe I wouldn't have gone to before. Like I, it's, it's probably, it's on my list, but it may have been 10, 10 countries down and who knows if I would have ever been able to experience that. And just, just through meeting the right people, I end up in, in South Korea writing K-pop and it was one of the coolest experiences that I've ever had. And that was just December. So that was very recent. Um, before that, playing K-Days. Um, I opened up for Aqua at K-Days. That was the craziest experience ever. Once again, like, baby Laurel would have seen that and been like, what? No way. Um, like, it's always been a goal of mine to play on like a big festival stage. I kind of just saw that way more in the future. Um, and, and I didn't know that that was something that was possible in my own city, you know? Um, I... Performing as an artist has always been something that um, that scares me, in all honesty. Um, I saw myself way more in the background. I was more of like this quiet songwriter. And then when I decided to do my own artist project, I kind of just like stumbled into it. And then all of a sudden was like, I have to be a performer on stage now. And I have to um, like tr try and connect with my audience and, and be engaging and have this incredible voice and it was just like all these things that I was like oh my goodness so the the fact that I went and I got chosen to do this um this big festival stage performance and opening for for Aqua was like I the whole time I I didn't feel like it was me yet I think I hadn't like mentally prepared myself for that even being an option yet it was just like in my head I was like that's gonna happen 100% I'm gonna big, play big stages so I was like but that's two years in advance so when it happened, I was like, oh no, <laughs> like, like I, I knew that it wasn't going to be a horrible experience, but it was just like, oh, this is happening now. Okay. Um, and as soon as like all my friends and family were going to be there, I was like, no, no one come. No one, like I just, I need to practice on a smaller stage. Like I'm not ready yet, you know? <laughs> um, but, but I'm so incredibly happy that it happened. I think it happened at the right time. I had gone through like a big uh, mental lull with being a musician and, and a lot of it so much of it happens behind the scenes you know um, you write so many shitty songs before you release one that you think that you you might like you know um, it's just you're there's so much practice behind it there's there's so much just it's like a mental game constantly um, it's so interesting creating creating something that you're happy with, that you really hope will impact other people, but at the same time, you want, if you want it as a career, you need to figure out a way to put it out the right way and market it and, and for hopefully some at least financial break even, you know what I mean, to make it worth it. Like I have the creative side of my brain, which is, which just wants to be a hippie and, and create music and live in the jungle, like you know what I mean, like not care and just, and just bring happiness to people. And then there's the like uh, successful logical side of my brain that's like, no, like business, like we, we're gonna make money, like to the top, you know? And uh, it's, it's interesting trying to, <laughs> to make those happy at the same time. And, and um, yeah, it's just hard putting, putting your heart and soul into something and putting it out into the world um, and, and, yeah. <laughs> no, it makes sense. Like it's it's very any self-employed person would be able to relate to that. Mm -hmm. Anybody that has to ever market themselves or yeah, it's marketing like, yourself is hard. You're betting tough. on yourself. Yeah. And you're you have to like sometimes like like there's no confidence. Sometimes there's zero confidence and you have to put money in into yourself and believe in yourself enough that like this product or whatever you're putting out is going to be worth it. And to me, that's crazy. That's so crazy. You know how much confidence you have to have in order to do that? Like, I, f I feel like I fake that so much. Like, I can't 
because I don't feel 100% confident all the time, I'm like, well, here we go, might as well just try, you know, like, that's the attitude I have to have, because, or else, like, I, I go crazy. A ton of people listening are going to relate to that. <laughs> you got personal trainers that are going to relate, you got, like, business owners, people yeah. that own, like, restaurants, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's just, nobody really is willing to just say it into a microphone, yeah. like, hey, <laughs> Half the time when I looked like I was owning it, I did not think that I was owning it. Yeah. I was just like, oh, yeah, we're just going to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you had to give yourself a pep talk mm-hmm. to kind of turn things around, what would that pep talk be? What would it sound like? I think I've learned the best pep talks, um, honestly, from my boyfriend. He's the best hype, hype man in the whole <laughs> entire world, and I think through him, I've, I've learned a lot. Um, positive self-talk is so incredibly important, and... When you when you don't even notice that you you've negative talked yourself into a, into a hole, it's so hard to get out of it sometimes. Um, my best pep talk. Um, I think I take a step back from everything, and instead of being super focused on on music and if it's good enough and if I'm gonna make it work, and I just take a step back and I'm like, hey, why am I doing this? Um, I I want to make people happy. I want to be happy. Um, I want to. Just live live my life the way that I would like to. And what does that look like? That looks like um, me having the time that I have, that I'm so fortunate that I have to spend time with friends and family. That means that I have the time to, to be creative and make music. And that means that I have the time to enjoy um, the little things and, and just really do what I want to do. And, and if I have that, then I'm happy. And all this other stuff, like that's not as crazy as it seems right now. I get so in a hole and into it at times and and because it just feels so real it feels like sometimes you're riding this wave and then instead of like you're like looking at everything and you're like oh this is beautiful and then sometimes you were in that wave but like everything's crashing over top of you and all of your problems are like the sand on the ground they're like pelting you in the face and you can't see things clearly anymore you know what i mean until you poke your head above water and you're like oh it's beautiful out here you yeah. know and, and I think about that a lot is, is my life. Um, and, and honestly, it's just taking a step back um, from it and just perspective. Yeah. It's, it's so hard when you get caught in your own head, but it's, it's honestly just perspective. And I like how you talked about your hype man. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just like in the line of work that you are in, mm-hmm. you need a hype man. Oh, you do. You do so much. And... And I, a lot of my friends, um, I think that, like, all of us have at one point have had to be our own hype mans. You know what I mean? Hype women, hype girls. But um, it just makes such a big difference when there's one other person who is like, Laurel, you're not crazy. You know? Like, I know you think that you're crazy right now, but you're not. Like, it makes sense what you're doing and keep doing it because you're doing a good job. You know? It's like, oh, okay. Like, just someone else telling you that. It's, it's so incredible because it's such a, an independent world, especially in the beginning as a musician. Like being an independent, independent musician is an incredible thing um, because you, you call the shots. You make your decisions. You um, are the one to control your music and where it's going and what kind of music you want to do. But at the same time, it can feel so overwhelming and crippling to the point where instead of being on top of it and controlling all those decisions and being like, sweet, I'm in control. It's like, holy shit, I'm in control of everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's just to have someone there kind of just take that away for a second and just be like, you, you can do this. You 100% can do this. I believe in you. Like, I on the outside, I'm seeing you and what you're doing and I believe in you. It's just, it's the best feeling in the world. You know? I think it's really important to, to find those people that do do believe in what you're doing and support you and you support them and and it's it's crazy to go through this world um alone things are hard and and having those people is is crazy important did you have any period in your life when you didn't have a hype person yeah i did um three years ago was a really really hard year for me um i finished school i had just been through a really 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 bad breakup um it was kind of one of those ones where you classic case of like mental abuse and you you alienate yourself from everyone and your friends and your family and and uh to be honest i just i ran away to thailand (laughs) 
as most people uh, yeah, do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, when everything finally ended, I, I was just like, I, I, have, I feel like I have nothing. I feel like I have no joy anymore, you know, and, I, and I've, all my friends, have, I've pushed them away. It's my own fault, and I know that, that I did this, but um, I was like, I need something that'll, that'll bring me joy. And I, I looked online, and I just, I think that day, booked a trip, and two weeks later, I left to Thailand. And, and it's so funny because it's so cliche, but it was the most influential, life-changing trip of my life. And if anyone is out there um, going through a tough situation and they can make that decision to go travel, oh my gosh, do it. Do it. It was it was the, the greatest one of the greatest things I've ever done for myself. So what changed? What did you learn about yourself that you applied when you came back from that trip? Yeah, so I went on a group trip. I went on one of those trips, uh, it was with Free and Easy, where you go, um, the, the trip's pretty much planned out. Like I just wanted I wanted low stress, but I wanted to experience everything. And and the idea of having a bunch of people who wanted to travel around the same age as you just sounded like the best thing ever because I had lost my community, you know? And um, when I went, uh, I I realized who I was again. You know, you're you're meeting all these people for the first time, and so you're hearing their their stories, and you get to talk about who you are, and then you're like, oh yeah, I am, I am this person. I I am outgoing. I am funny. I, I do have a personality. Like I I like these things. I like talking to people, and it was just like I all of a sudden be, went from like a shell of a human to like I was a, I was a full person again. You know. I had, I had thoughts, I had feelings, I had, I, I, I had no problem getting out of bed and running to the beach and, and, and just having the best time of my life. And I think that was what really did it. Um, it and those connections that I made with people, it was crazy how, how important they were for me. And I, we still talk. I still talk to so many of those people that I met. Um, and I think once again, it's just um, that collective experience. We all went there for whatever reason we did. And together, we had had an experience that no one else in this world also had. Like, because any other, I could have gone on that trip a different time and we would have had a different experience, you know? Um, but the experience we had, we all shared and it was all, it was incredible for us. And, and, uh, and, and so I think that just, that creates that bond with people that is super important. Yeah, yeah. and it, it really, really helped me. I, I came back and I... I felt like I was myself again. Yeah. Yeah. How did that change how you chose the people that you surrounded yourself with? Like you got to know yourself, you're yeah. a whole person again. How did mm -hmm. you approach your new friendships and relationships and stuff? Uh, I decided that I was never, ever going to let someone uh, let me get that low because I knew what it felt like and I saw how it happened. As soon as I had some clarity from it, I was like, oh, that's how that happens. You know, and I, I decided I was never going to let anyone um, make me feel small ever again. Um, and so I think I went into things um, guarded, but um, also a lot more compassionate than I would have if I hadn't gone and yeah. run away. You know, um, I was guarded because I was terrified of being hurt by anyone. Um, but I also was really, really craving uh, that connection and human experience and and. I just started talking to people again. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So with the songs that you've created so mm -hmm. far, like taking the ones that are that I would be able to find on Spotify, because like I, I checked out some of your stuff and I was like, yeah, I could listen to this <laughs> over and over. Like it's Thank good you so stuff. Much. Thank you. Which song are you most proud of? Uh the last one I released, just so you know. Um that one was about that breakup that I had. Um and it was kind of like stepping away from everything and just allowing myself to kind of just be a little bit angry. Yeah. You know, but also take my power back. I was like a little bit angry and, and I also kind of regained this confidence. And so instead of feeling small, it was that like I feel strong kind of thing. And I, and like it hurt, but like I kind of, I kind of wish that you would, you would feel the hurt that I felt. So you, you would know, so you could never do that to anyone else again. You know, I think it's just the most real songs that I've, written lyrically um it's something that i didn't ever think i was going to ex experience i mean no one does no one thinks that they're gonna be the person who ends up in that abusive relationship you know um in a way i'm very thankful that i did because i'm so much stronger of a person because of it um i feel like i have a lot of um insight and advice to give other people in a similar situation 
um, friends who have gone through similar things, I, instead of just being confused and frustrated, because it seems crazy, like I understand, and I'm able to be a lot more supportive, um, and it makes for a lot of uh, good <laughs> song material and, oh, yeah. and topics to pull from. Like, yeah, so, so that one I think I'm most proud of. Um, lyrically, um, I wrote a lot of songs in that, that realm, um, but that was the one that, that I decided to get produced and, and released. Um, yeah, I, I'm excited. I wrote, I've been writing a lot more music recently and, uh, I've been working on a project and that's going to be start, like going to start coming out soon here. Um, I'm excited for, for that to come out. So yeah. what, what's the spark that starts up a project for you? You have your business side, you have your yeah. creative side. Like, yeah. What makes that happen because sometimes it's hard like we we hit that mental block yeah but we have our business side we have, we're like okay what, what's the next project what, yeah. so what what how does that work for you um i've always wanted to create an ep um right now like an ep um being like a i think it's considered like anywhere from like five to seven songs is considered an ep and so it's like a small little mini album um I like it's a singles game right now in the world because of music streaming services and the way that everything's going and so I'm still releasing it mostly singles but I've always wanted to have my own little project that kind of was this entity in itself this little thing that I could put on a CD if I wanted to and and it's a thing and not just a song you know something that I can sell something that kind of um, defines who I am at that time and what I was thinking in that time of my life um, and so I decided that I wanted to do that last year. Um, there's a producer that I just started working with, um, kind of on a like trial basis for fun, and we wrote one song together, and I was like, let's do this. And so we've been working on that um, for a while now, and it's it's been such an interesting experience just doing it, the two of us. Um, I know a lot of independent artists will work with other people, um, and, and um, really big artists will usually have three or four or five songwriters on one song and there's a label supporting them and there's all this and it's been hard doing this project it's been a blessing at the same time though it's just been hard um, for me making these big decisions and trusting that the decisions that I'm making are the right ones and who's to say they're right or wrong it's just I would like the best for the project um, I would like to give it the most success it could possibly have and to reach the most people and and, and sometimes it's hard making those creative decisions and, and not really knowing what the answer is, just hoping that the decisions that you're making are, you know, are right for yeah. you, for the, the music, for the world, for... It's a lot to think about, but um, I'm very, very excited that I had decided to, to do that. And, and as soon as I decided that I wanted to be a musician, I just wanted to create an album. Yeah. I think that's a lot of people... It's like, create an album, you know? You have something to sell. You have something to that kind of defines who you are. Um, yeah, so I've been working on that. So there's a term that Lululemon uses that mm -hmm. I steal it all the time because I think it sounds cool, and it's like the big, hairy, audacious goal. Mm -hmm. What is your big, hairy, audacious goal? Uh, so I have, I have a couple different ones. Um, as a as a songwriter, to have like like a top forty hit, like a, a radio trending number one top 40 hit um and as a musician um i want to do a world tour and and i don't necessarily envision it in on like a, like a stadium capacity um i don't think that i need that if it happens amazing cool that's the coolest thing in the world but i just want to be able to um release music and and be able to share it and travel around around the world and, and play live. Um, and that's always kind of been been the end goal. Um, and I just I want to just keep creating. I and enjoy enjoy the process. I think that's a really, really important goal for me um, is because I feel like I'm so uh, how do I explain it like out outcome oriented like it's like, you see this thing and you and you achieve it and then you have happiness, right? You think you do, or or you there's this goal and then you're just really really striving for it and then you hit it and it's like amazing. But with music, like a lot of other professions, there's no cap. 
you know? There's no amazing, you've, you've made it, cool. There's always a, okay, now what, what's next? Yeah. And so I think one of the big goals for me um, as a musician is to enjoy the whole entire process. Musician as a song and a songwriter, so you enjoy the whole entire process. Um, or else there's no point in doing it. I could do something else, you know? I could do something else that business-wise makes more sense. You know, if, if this creative, beautiful thing that I enjoy doing so much becomes something that I don't want to do anymore and I'm not enjoying it and I'm just focusing on what success looks like, then there's no, you know, I don't know if there's, a, if there's a, as much of a point in me, me doing it anymore. Yep. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. In the last 12 months, mm-hmm. what's the biggest moment of joy that you've experienced? Hmm. Let me think. I think, for real, it's it was being on that stage at K-Days. Yep. That was that moment of... I could do this. Like the the stress before was insane. <laughs> um, just because I I knew that I wasn't quite ready, you know. Um, I hadn't played many stages before. Like I think I'd maybe played four shows ever. Um, so I knew I wasn't as ready as I I really really wish that I was. But the fact that d- knowing that and me getting up there. And seeing everyone that supported me out there in the crowd and like, just like their faces was the best feeling in the world. Oh my gosh. Um, it gave me, it honestly gave me that, like that boost that I needed. Yeah. Um, I rode that high for a little while. Uh, I just, that was like right at the beginning of me starting this, this EP that was in July last year. Um, and yeah, it was just, I, I felt very unsure about music. Yeah. Very unsure about myself as a songwriter. Wasn't sure what the next step was. And as, as soon as that happened, I was like, this is it. That I, I, I can do this. I, I, I need to do this. Like, if I didn't do this, I'm crazy, you know? Um, and, and the coolest part, I think, was, is like, yes, all my friends and my family were there. But I talked to people afterwards who weren't my friends and my family, who, who said that they had they loved my performance and they started following me and we, we still keep in touch and, and they're checking up on me to see when I'm releasing new music and they become um, new fans and people that are kind of part of my life and and it was just a, a very, very important experience for me, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool and the, the fun thing was like I had reached out to you to be on the podcast like in like 2018. Yeah. <laughs> and so like I saw your performance on K-Days through like Instagram and stuff like that. I was like, holy shit. I was like vicariously yeah. like, soaking that up. Yeah. And it's just so I I know how much you enjoyed that because it, it showed through through your post and through all of like the, the reposts that you mm-hmm. had and all that stuff. And it's just so cool to have moments like that. But leading up to it, you talk about how you were kind of in like that, that block or like that yeah. roadblock. Yeah. What kind of advice or, or hype would you have for somebody that's feeling exactly like that right now? Uh, it's not the end. Um, you are going to have like a hundred no's to, to one yes. You're going to have a hundred bad songs to one good song. Um, I think it's so important to just keep going. If it's something that you want to do, just mindlessly keep going mindlessly keep practicing, you know, when it's hard, when it's hard and it seems impossible and your mind's going crazy and telling you every single reason why you don't, just grab your guitar and play, just practice those vocals, just sing, like just write that material and even if you sit at the piano that one day and you play chords and your melodies suck and you come up with two lines and you're like, these lines are garbage, I think it's so important to get the garbage out of the way so the good songs come out, you know? Um, and I think just generally in life with anything and in, in, um, in any um, profession or, or passion, um, it's not easy ever. Um, and I think the hardest thing is just facing that resistance. We all feel resistance in, in whatever we do. Um, it's the people who push through that resistance constantly every single day and talk back to the negative self-talk in their head that's telling them like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing this? You can't do this, you know? 
and, and just talking back to that and having something to say back to that and pushing through it when it doesn't quite make sense, you know? Because it's not until you've had some small successes, big successes, something that you look back and you're like, oh, it did make sense. At the time, it never will feel like it makes sense, you yeah. know? That's good. That's some good advice. <laughs> <laughs> so I have one final question yeah. for you that I ask all of my guests. Okay. And it is, if you could give one piece of advice to someone on how to live their life to the fullest in the most true to themselves way, what would that piece of advice be? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, the fullest. Um, truly do what makes you happy. Um, if that's if that's one single thing, own in on that one single thing and just go for it. If that's 20 million different things, do them. Do the things that honestly make you happy. Um, I think it's... It's so hard, um, society standards, like everything's kind of shifting right now, um, especially, but, um, I know, I know growing up, my, my parents kind of had this idea of what they thought life looked like or what it should be like. And, and there's so many people that, that do settle and, and, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a nine to five because I know so many people that that makes them so happy. They love their job. They love their career. It makes them so happy. They wake up in the morning with a smile on their face. And if that's what makes you happy, oh my gosh, go for it. But whatever that is, don't hold back because when you do look back, you are going to have regret. And that's going to be, it's just, it seems, it seems so cliche and it's in, to say, but honestly, we have a single life. We have a single life and that is it. And at the end of it, you look back and you're like, man, like you would have been really, really cool if I, if I was a musician, you know, or it would have been really, really cool if I actually like pursued golf. I know I was good at it, you know, to look back on that and, and know that you, you didn't, that's, that's crazy to me. So in whatever capacity that is, do the things that make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me.